All right, let's start from the beginning on the new things you can see immediately with update 30. And it has to be said, the five save slots are going to be absolutely critical because there's some cool new things you can accomplish with forever communities. First, you can create a whole new community based on your legacy pool. I was able to do that pretty seamless. The cool thing about this new pool is that you can get a full breakdown of what you need, what skills you want to bring to the community. You can see full things from things in your inventory, what the leader role is, if they're a sheriff, if they're a builder. And there's just a lot of information that is shown to you guys to make this critical decision but if you already have an established community and that you enjoy absolutely playing with all the time there's a lot of things you can do here as well for one the new radio command you can now bring in someone from your legacy pool the cost is significant but when you activate this the same menu that showcases that entire pool is going to be available and when you call someone they are immediately going to be part of your community now but what if i have someone from a whole different community that you'd like to join your main community or you simply just want to make room but you don't want to banish someone well now from the community tab you can actually send anyone you want into that legacy pool from your community this is really important and it opens up more options to the game i actually got to do quite a bit of testing on this and it absolutely did some cool things one example i decided to stuff a bunch of items that i wanted to bring to another community on my same account i filled this lady here with a ton of stuff in her inventory and i sent her off to the legacy pool then i hopped in and started a brand new community community and I brought all her stuff. I called her in and I was able to get all the items and it helped jumpstart this new group. Another example of something that I felt was beneficial with this new radio command and legacy pool feature is I have a community with no red talent members and that was done on purpose to give myself a challenge but I'm missing a critical skill and powerhouse that helps me defeat plague hearts. So I sent this guy here, Samuel, over to the legacy pool and I brought him into that existing community that needed that skill. So with these new features, guys, you are now able to maximize the potential of your existing communities or jumpstart a completely brand new group with some awesome positive things. This could potentially be helpful, guys, if you decide to tackle higher difficulties and you want a little bit of some help there, or if you simply just want to navigate certain items or certain skills to make your playthrough easier and trade things between community and community. There's really a lot of combinations you can do to really utilize all these features and I wanted to show you guys firsthand how I was able to do that. All right, so what about the actual forever community part, you know, where you can kind of keep going? Well, I ended up getting to test that out and I was able to finish a simple green zone legacy with a trader. And when I was done with the game, I got two options to continue my community or disband it. This was very interesting because I was allowed to send anyone from the eight people in my community into the legacy pool, but I couldn't retrieve others from my previous legacies. So you can keep your exact same group or short in the group by sending them into the pool or just completely deleting them all together. What I did is I decided to keep everyone and was quickly prompted to the new map screen. Now this new map screen has a lot more details. It shows you the bases listed, just general more information, including if that community you're playing with has already visited in the past. So in theory, you can play on all the maps and complete all the stories all the way through and continue cycling through new maps with one same community. Now everything does reset within those maps if you've been in that map before four but now you can choose exactly which base you want to start a new map with so for example if you want to go ahead and just jump into farmland compound in trumbull valley and start there instead of the starter base that's totally an option you can do but keep in mind you need to have enough people and enough influence there's also a higher cost than normal to get into this existing base when you start a new map. So you want to make sure you're prepared ahead of time. I was also able to test out me getting into a new map mid game. So I simply headed to one of the exits and I was prompted with the new map screen. So I really love this new map UI and all the information it brings and how it enhances the visual of what you're getting into. So again, guys, overall, lots of new different types of things you can do, things you can accomplish and the replayability of this game completely jumps up just on those changes. I've already mentioned so far.